that slip over into another state senate district. Um, and that state senate district is represented very ably and honorably by Chris Romer. Chris, would you like to say something? Hey, good evening. It's great to see you. It's so nice to be a part of the best house district in Denver. And it's so <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I, um, I grew up in this house district. I grew up at uh, 2045 Eudora. I uh, then moved over to Montview and Cherry and had a little tour in my first home at 1126 Adams. And I am glad to be back at 840 Detroit, back in House District 8. Um, look, we are in a very important tipping point in this state and in this country. I could not be prouder to be a Democrat, to see the way in which Obama took his political capital and pushed that rock of health care up over the hill and made a difference yeah. to this country. I come, from a, I come from a political breed that tells you that political capital is something you put in a pile and you do not let it age. You spend it. Because when you spend it, guess what? You get more. And one of the things we need to figure out in Colorado is we are at a tipping point where this is a great shining state that has the fourth most educated population in the nation. And yet we are 48th in the nation in getting black and Latino children through college. That is an unacceptable dichotomy that is not a part of a moral society that we have not yet recognized nor dealt with. And I want to tell you the contribution that you all have given in Senator Johnston, who is absolutely a warrior on this issue. And yes, this bill on great leaders and great teachers is going to be one of the toughest fights we've had in that building in many years. But we're doing it in the right way, because one of the toughest things in politics is not to take your enemy, because I would love nothing better than to go run in the bill tomorrow, a bill to outlaw guns and concealed weapons on campuses all over Colorado. How many of you would be with me? Okay? That's a great bill to run. I also want to finish regulating medical marijuana, but that's another subject I'm not going to leave for tonight. But we're going to get it done. But I'll tell you, the toughest thing in politics is not to go challenge your enemies at the NRA or to go take the knuckleheads in pot and tell them how to become part of a better society. The toughest thing is to take one of your good friends, which the Colorado Education Union is a good friend, and we have to take them in and negotiate them into a new paradigm which will participate in making sure that we close that achievement gap. And I'm going to be fighting with Senator Johnson on that issue. And I know not everybody in this room is going to agree with me on that. But I want to make sure to let you guys know that, you know, we love what we do in this state. And one of the other deals that I've said to every teacher that I talk to, once we absolutely get an accountability system K-12, we need to make sure that rather than being ranked 48th in the nation in K-12 funding, we need to be ranked first. And that's a vision of a great shining state that I believe in. Lastly, I have a little bill that I'm trying to work on, which is we, we have this important issue, and not many of you may drive up and down I-70 every uh, weekend. Um, but a lot of our state is determined by having commerce and jobs and economic development. We've had a problem, and that is our carotid artery. That's the equivalent of our state's economy. And we cannot allow ourselves to continue to have gridlock and to basically have a stroke in our economy because we have not yet figured out how to do that. I proposed a common sense solution which says, look, you got four lanes and you had a directional problem. Why don't we use three of those lanes going one way when you got a traffic jam and three of them going the other way in the morning when it's a different jam? That's basically one of those common sense solutions about how government does more with less. And given the fact that we're broke, we're having to do that a lot. So I couldn't be prouder of representing you. It's an honor to serve with Michael Johnston and Beth McCann and all the other great legislators from House District 8. But um, this is my home. And it's great to be back at the 62nd spaghetti dinner. Thank you so much.